going to show you how I make my apple pie from scratch. Is it a lot of work? Yes, it is. But is it difficult? No, it isn't. Let's get started. I like to start by making the pie dough. Here I have two and a half cups of all-purpose flour. One cup of super cold butter. I've chopped it up into little bits. A half a teaspoon of salt, one tablespoon of sugar, and some ice water. Start by adding about a cup and a half of flour to a large bowl. Your sugar, your salt, mix it up a little bit, toss in your butter. I have a pastry cutter. This is going to chop up this butter and mix it in until the butter reaches about a pea size. Now if you don't have a pastry cutter, that's okay. You can also simply use two forks and mash it all together that way. You can also use a food processor. It makes the whole process a bit easier. But if you don't have that, you don't need any fancy tools and it turns out just as good, if not better, than using a food processor. I have a good start on chopping up the butter so I can add the remainder of the flour. Finish mixing it in. Good enough. I'm gonna start by adding four tablespoons of this ice water and I'm gonna sprinkle it all over. Mix it in. It's really important not to overwork your pastry dough. Otherwise, it will give you more of a dense, greasy texture once it's baked. This will look quite grainy. Add enough water between six to eight tablespoons, just enough for this dough, if you pinch it, for it to come together. It's all starting to come together. So I'm going to add another three tablespoons. It's coming together nicely. Dump this onto the counter. Knead the dough until it comes together. So I'm just going to form this into a ball. Maybe I'll add another tablespoon of ice water. And there we go. It's formed into a ball. It will be a bit of work to get it to come together. I can see little chunks of butter popping through the dough and that will bake into a beautiful flaky crust. Cut your dough in half, form into discs. Wrap up your discs of dough and refrigerate for a minimum of one hour. You can keep them in the fridge for up to two days or you can freeze these up to three months. Let's make our filling. In my little sauce pot, I have a half a cup of butter. You can use salted or unsalted. I always use salted butter. Start by melting the butter. The butter has melted. Now let's add three tablespoons of all-purpose flour. Mix it in. It has formed a little bit of a paste. A quarter of a cup of water, a half of a cup of sugar, and a half of a cup of packed brown sugar. You can use light brown sugar, dark brown sugar, golden brown sugar, whatever you like. Mix it together. One teaspoon of vanilla extract, two teaspoons of cinnamon, and a half of a teaspoon of nutmeg. Now I'm going to turn the heat up a little bit, bring this mixture to a light rumbling boil. The sauce is done. Take it off the heat. Our beautiful sauce is cooling in the background here. It's time to prepare the apples. Around three pounds of apples. For me, that is six apples. Three pounds could be anywhere between six to eight apples. I'm using three Granny Smith apples and three Honeycrisp apples. I like to use a variety of different apples because I like the tartness of the Granny Smith apple and I like the sweetness other apples like the Honeycrisp bring to the pie. I've also juiced a half of a lemon, which I'll be adding to the bowl of chopped apples. The lemon juice sprinkled over top will help prevent the apples from browning. Let's get chopping. I wanted to show you how easy it is to prepare slice up the apples. All I do, using a paring knife, I cut off just the very top and the very bottom 
of the apple. So now it sits flat. I don't have an apple core or a melon baller, so all I do is I use a teaspoon measuring spoon, scoop out the stem from the bottom and the top. Then I cut the apple in half, measuring spoon again, carve out the core. Taking a vegetable peeler, I peel off the peel, slice the apple into relatively thin and consistent pieces. And I've been adding the lemon juice, tossing it in with the apples. As you can see, it has prevented the apples from turning brown. You can use lemon juice or apple cider vinegar. Pour over the beautiful sauce we've made. Now I'm ready to roll out the pie dough that it has refrigerated for a minimum of one hour. I've turned my oven on to 425 degrees. Let's assemble this pie. I'm using a standard nine inch pie pan. Lined a pan with some foil. This pie does have a tendency to bubble up and overflow just slightly. It is a very juicy pie. A few tablespoons of flour, lightly dusting the countertop with while we roll out our dough, and an egg whisked up with one tablespoon of cream. You can use cream or half and half or milk. This will be brushed on top of the pie using a pastry brush. This gives the pie a beautiful finished sheen. And a rolling pin. I've taken one of the discs of dough out of the fridge, left the other one chilling away. A little bit of flour to my work surface here. Roll this dough into a 12 inch round. I'm using a nine inch pie pan, so the 12 inches will account for the sides of the pie dish. I roll one way, flip it, roll it in the next direction, I like to bring in the sides a little bit, push it in again. It helps evenly roll out the dough. Push it in. I flip it around because I find that it helps prevent sticking when I go to lift up the finished 12 inch round. Good enough. I find the easiest way to remove, lightly coat your rolling pin. Start at the very end of your round and just start rolling it onto itself. Just very gently. Roll it back onto your pie dish. Gently press it in. You can trim off your excess. While I roll out the lattice top, I like to stick the bottom of the pie crust in the freezer to let it chill really, really well while I prepare the top so that it bakes extra flaky. Let's roll out the lattice top. This time I only rolled the dough out to about 10-11 inches because I'm not accounting for the sides. To do the lattice top, I'm cutting the dough into 3 quarter inch wide strips. Fairly straight. It doesn't matter. It doesn't need to be perfect. We're ready to assemble the pie. Pour in your delicious pie filling. Evenly distribute the mixture. Try to keep it away from the very edge of the pie crust. It'll just make it easier for you to assemble the lattice top to the pie crust sides. Using the longest lengths, place five on top of your pie. Carefully fold back the middle two. Place another band in the opposite direction. Fold the two back over. Now take the opposite three and fold those over. Repeat.
trim off the excess. I just use a fork and then press everything in together. Just smush in the sides a little bit. Put an even layer of the egg wash over all the bands and the outside crust. My oven rack is placed right in the middle of the oven. Bake this pie for 15 minutes at 425 degrees. After the 15 minutes, turn your oven down to 350 degrees and bake until the apples become soft. Around 35 to 45 minutes. See you in 15 minutes. It's been 15 minutes. You can see that the pie has developed a beautiful color on the crust and it's puffed beautifully. Now turn the oven down to 350 degrees and continue baking for another 35 to 45 minutes. I know it can be hard to wait for a pie to cool and set, but it's worth the wait. I hope you enjoy this recipe. See you again next time.